success to me is not necessarily about you know, climbing the ladder from a business professional perspective. It's not about how much money you make. Success is all about your relationships with people. She's an executive. She's a mom. She's a community activist. And I think it's important that women of all ages and at all positions in an organization have a role model and Susie is that role model. Susie has positively influenced the Pittsburgh region through her work with such organizations as the Boy Scouts, Children's Hospital, her church, just giving back to women at Citizens Bank. She's out there making sandwiches for these charities. She's out there being involved with her kids and getting out there collecting food and sorting it and distributing it. That's the kind of person she is. One of the people who has really inspired me from a perspective of you know, giving back is my husband, Neil. The Children's Hospital Foundation activity really was his brainchild. And together, we really worked on um, seeing a need. Um, we had um, some opportunity to raise some, fun some funds to help renovate the ninth floor playroom there. And so as a result, um, we put our heads together, had the support of some really great friends, um, great family members, and frankly, some great corporate partners. Someone can come in and say, well, we want to give a little bit of money to a, a certain cause, and, and that's it. But when, you're, when you say, I want, to, I want to do something, and I want to be there every step of the way, it just shows, I think, that they, they truly um, cared about what was going on. One of the things that I'm involved with right now that's really important to me is trying to help raise funds, or finalizing a portrait for Katherine Baker Knoll. Um, the importance of having the ability for a young person, a young woman, to walk through the Capitol building in, in Harrisburg and to be able to look through the rotunda or go into one of the offices and look at the up on the ceiling. There are, near the ceiling, at the top of the wall, there are portraits of every single lieutenant governor of the state around the entire room. Every single one of them are men. Catherine's picture is going to be the first one there. And I think to me it's very, very important that when young women come to the Capitol building, they see someone just like them, who has broken ground, who has done something that they may aspire to do, and they realize they can do it. Being an Athena finalist is a uh, a really wonderful honor uh, just to be nominated with all these great women and to see the history of the Athena Awards and all of the people that have been winners. I'm, I'm really deeply honored. Kathleen should receive the Athena Award because she is such an innovator in our industry, in this region. She's a pioneer. She's creative. She cultivates um, us staff to be as best we can be professionally as well as personally. Um, she's open to new ideas. She's continually striving for the best and holds the line, no matter how difficult that is. I'm very proud of the kind of workplace that we have that really honors the individual people and their own life journeys and how to help them along that way and help them be better employees, too. I nominated Kathleen for the Athena Award because I find her so inspirational. She had an idea over 20 years ago that we were throwing away material that could save lives elsewhere. And she took that idea and it is now a $6.5 million operation annually. And not only is she helping needy around the world, she is also aiding Pittsburgh at the same time. Kathleen started in her dining room with one product and it has grown to our 40,000 square feet of operations and product. It's a win for environmental waste reduction. It's a win for our outreach as Pittsburgh grows to be more and more international, is becoming more and more recognized as an environmental hub, new industries. Kathleen has been on that cutting edge for the past 22 years. Well, you know, defining success and how would I define it? I really thought a lot about that. Um, what is success and what the differences between success and achievement. And 
above my desk, I have a, a Malagasy saying that says, achievement is the beauty of your life. So I would rather think of it as achievement because therein, I think, is your real success. If I had to describe Kathleen in three words, I would start with fearless. She's collaborative and she's extremely resourceful. I really depend on everyone around me to help me be a better leader. Uh, I think it is all about sharing what you have, uh, what you know, your gifts, in a very thoughtful and respectful way. What inspires me is really the needs of women and the women that I work with in these neighborhoods that surround Cardo. Um, and I see all the things that they must deal with. I'm very much inspired to really work with them and um, to do everything I can to help them. But also, really important, is to let them develop. That's really been where my focus has been. As a Sister of Mercy, Sister Fidelis has taken the three traditional vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience and has lived this life for over 50 years. Um, in addition, the Sisters of Mercy take a fourth vow of service to the underserved. Sister Fidelis has designed this entire program herself. She created Mercy Neighborhood Ministries. She has been doing the fundraising. She has been doing the leadership, the advocacy. Uh, she is 24-7 available to the people in this neighborhood. And that is just truly a remarkable achievement. She's involved with the youth enrolled in the program. She has gone door to door and helped recruit students for the program. She has provided the library that we use as far as our curriculum and career exploration. She has gone as far as providing meals from the Sisters of Mercy. So not only is she there for academic support and financial support in some cases, but just day to day. I think of Sister Fidelis as the energizer bunny of Carlo University. She is always on the go. She has boundless energy and enthusiasm. Uh, and she has a, a great love for the work that she does. Well, for younger women who are really trying uh, to find their own ways, I th uh, it's sometimes so important that they really do focus on what they want to be, what they hope to become. Of course, it's all important. But there is, it is so important to look out for the other person, to be connected, and to be interested. I think young women today have to realize that is just as important as getting your career underway, is sharing your life with other people and moving about in such a way that other lives can be bettered. What being an Athena finalist means to me, first of all, it is an awesome feeling. That's the first thing. And absolutely humbling, very, very humbling. And I, I really do need to thank the committee for allowing me this opportunity. I call her a woman of a hundred disguises because the one day she will be uh, playing the role of a junkie and the next day she'll be playing the role of a businesswoman. So she has multiple uh, talents which are very beneficial not only to the police bureau, but for the citizens of the city of Pittsburgh. She is exemplary in her profession. She mentors to young female police officers. She also has won numerous service awards. She has this doggedness to her about doing the right thing and making sure that the community is served. Anything you, you get, you, you should be willing to give. And that should trans, uh, transcend to moving it forward. It should be an action thing. It should always be moving. And that's what women, I, I try to get them to understand that you can't keep it, you have to give it away. Brenda is a listener. She encourages. 
she challenges, and she wants you to move outside of your boundaries because she encourages you to the point where you feel like, yes, I can do it. You know, the sky is the limit. My greatest advice, I think, would be to always remember there is a power out there greater than you. And that power is usually running the show. And I would hope that they find that power. I would hope that they respect that power. I would hope that they trust that power. And I would hope that they would yield to it. Because there's always something there greater than you. I've been involved with Athena a couple ways, and it's probably the best program that I can think of as far as honoring women in the community, honoring women that have accomplished things in their lives, and it just feels like a, a huge honor. If I had to describe Kim in three words, it would be valuable, trusted leader. I think that she has, during the time I've been with Heffern Tolson, uh, has really shown an example through her actions and how she has led the firm, and I think it um, is really felt throughout our organization all the way down through the ranks. I nominated Kim because I think in every way uh, she is an inspiration. Uh, she inspires us by the commitment that she brings to this community. I think it, you know you learn as you get into management roles that um, I think early in your career you think about developing skills and then you think about uh, managing projects and then eventually you realize that you really your impact as a leader or as a manager is that you want to be trying to get other people to be successful. The reason why Kim is a great mentor is that she knows uh, how to balance the management as well as uh, giving people room to grow. Um, in my personal case she's been a wonderful mentor. Uh, she has coached me uh, when I needed it. Um, she's been available when I went to seek it out. She has um, uh, come to meet with me occasionally, but she also lets me uh, manage my own uh, workforce, uh, providing leadership when necessary, but doesn't overdo it. She is always available for students. We bring students in to, to talk to her. Uh, I know our, the professional women at our college, the faculty and the senior staff look to her uh, and believe that her example is a very important one for them and they deeply appreciate that she is always reaching out. Kim has an amazing capacity to always reach out to people. I think the advice I would give to young women is um, be true to yourself. Um, really understand what's important in your life. Uh, don't try to uh, to live your life to win awards or get accolades, but really find what your passion is. And if you find something you're passionate about, you're going to be successful at it. And, well, I think in life you, you have to decide what's important and what's not important. And I, I was talking about living a life of intention earlier. Um, finding the time to uh, do things for other people is, for me, that's really what my life is about. Hopefully, uh, when I'm not here anymore, people would say, this is someone that really cared about other people. and. I would say I get that from my parents, from my grandparents, it's kind of the way we live. Being an Athena finalist for me means, it means two things really. It means being a part of a group of women that um, are spectacular and that's very humbling for me. And also, if there's anything in my life that I would want to be known for, it would be about empowering women and making women better and helping women um, achieve what they want to achieve. And so Athena, for me, really hits that sweet spot. Well, one of the things that MJ does in her professional career is coach people. And this is coaching them on a variety of skills that will help their advancement, especially in the areas of negotiation. And so she has helped countless women negotiate anything from an increased salary to increased responsibilities at work to getting a promotion to thinking about what the next strategic direction is for their career. I was a trial lawyer in a district attorney's office that was almost all men. And I would go to court and I'd watch people and I'd think, oh, 
am not cut out for this. And so there I was, I walked into a courtroom and Carol Corgan was trying a case. And it was interesting because no one ever said to me, oh, go watch Carol try a case. People said, go watch this guy or that guy or this guy. And, and you know, there were so few women around, you'd think that somebody would have said, go watch Carol, but no one had. So I walk into the courtroom and there's Carol trying a case. And I had this epiphany. I said, oh, I can do that for me was a, a very transformational moment for me and it taught me a lesson that we have to build those bridges or build those paths for people because you know everybody needs to find the way to get to do what they want to do but it's not always obvious. I think MJ has had a big impact with the organizations that she has worked for, with the nonprofit boards that she has served on, such as the Women and Girls Foundations. She serves on the board of my organization, Progress, which teaches women and girls to negotiate. And she has been a shining star on those boards to really help those organizations achieve their mission. We went through and we read about what she had done to inspire so many women and how she had led women to really be able to take care of themselves, to ask for what they needed, to realize they could also say no. So I think that what she's done is really created strength in women where women might not have had it before. Uh, my goal in life has always been if I'm gonna fail, I wanna fail spectacularly. I wanna fail with a ta-da, because I don't ever wanna fail because I didn't try hard enough. And so for women, I'd say just go out there and, and get what you want and negotiate for what you want. Thank you.